Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week my goal is to finally get this seat finished and at least get the dash panel sorted inside the car. Alright, so yes, the first thing on this episode is I want to get this seat completely finished. I'm sick of working on it, I've had enough. I just want it done. So uh, I've started unpicking this uh, backrest of this one. It's quite a slow and tedious job. So uh, I'll finish off unpicking this and then re-sew it and then I'll be part way there. And there we have it, we have two seats, all done, close enough, that's gonna do because I don't wanna work on them anymore. The only thing I need to sort out as yet is a lot of these inserts aren't staying together. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking I might put a little bit of Sikaflex on the edge, on the outside, clamp them closed and leave them overnight and then um, hopefully it'll hold well enough but I can flick it off and get them apart if I do need to. Uh, so, moving right along, I think we need to have a closer look at the windows. Not only do I have scratches on this aluminium window frame that I need to repair, the other issue I've found is that winding the window up and down is really stiff and hard and uh, I'm going to break things if I keep forcing it. So I looked into what it's going to take to repair and, and what the problem is. At first I thought it may be the uh, the nylon bushes that are in the, the rail of the window itself. But looking into it, I don't think that's actually the problem. And what the issue is, is that the felt on the inside of this window is all gone. Particularly on the outside edge of the window, which is uh, on a reverse angle. So the water sits in it and has basically killed all the felt in there. So I'm going to take both window frames back out again. Take all the felt out and I bought some more um, felt inserts for them. So hopefully the windows will slide up and down the way they're supposed to. All right, so I've got all this window frame stripped back and uh, now I need to strip off all the anodizing. I did a bit of research and apparently one of the best things to get the anodizing off is oven cleaner. Now I had a look and just what we had lying around, I have the odorless type, which apparently is not as good at getting the anodizing off, but it's what I've got and I don't want to go <laughs> and buy some uh, and, uh, and leave what I'm doing. So I'm gonna give this a try and just leave it a bit longer and see if it works. So uh, let's try some oven cleaner. All right, now I need to get back and get back to work on this dash piece. And there's a couple of things that I'm not happy with at this stage. Coming over to the glove box, this piece is sitting flat on the dash. This piece here, this base is sticking out way too far. They're not lining up. So I need to work out how to either get the glove box back further or space out the center panel and space it out all the way along to get them to match. All right, more little issues. Uh, I've now found that this latch for the glove box because of the way I've mounted this here, this doesn't protrude through far enough to actually latch. So I have to clear out a bit of extra space so it can actually close. All right, so I've got the glove box mounted. I still have to screw it up properly, but I think I've worked out how I'm going to fix my spacing issue here. So I mentioned earlier that the top edges above where these trim panels go are bare and don't have anything on them. Now, I need to do something about that anyway, and what I'm thinking is I can make up another couple of these pads that sit on here and bend up over, over this, matching what I've done on the glove box. So there'll be a nice vinyl covered pad. It fills in this area here, it fits in all nicely and I'll do the same on the other side so that this dash panel sits nice and flush and level the whole way along and um, hopefully it looks the goods. 
All right, I've let these sit for at least an hour or more, so now I'm gonna go through and clean them up and actually see if it, uh, if it took the anodizing off the way I hoped it would. If not, I'm gonna have to go and get the other stuff. All right, I thought that would be too easy, so it didn't work, it didn't even touch it. So I think I'm gonna have to go back and I might actually use some scotch brite on them to rough it up first, give it some place to penetrate, and then I'm gonna go and get the right stuff and see if that uh, actually does the job. All right, time to try again. This time I've got some heavy duty stuff, so we'll see if this works and uh, does what it's supposed to. Right, now I need to use my cardboard templates to make up the panels that go in in these top edges. So I need to follow this curve around and much easier to do it on cardboard and uh, trim it and get it right. All right, that time around it definitely worked. This stuff actually works. The other stuff did not work at all. Um, but I'm gonna give it another hit because uh, even though I think most of it's off, it's clear anodizing, so you can't actually really tell whether it's there or not. So I'm going to doubly make sure it's all gone and then I can polish them up and um, yeah, we'll see what we can do about retreating them. So these are looking a little bit chunkier and a little bit more what I was after. So I have now mounted the other cardboard on the back with the vinyl covering. It's all lifting up, but that'll all sit in place nicely once everything is in holding it down. So let's see how they fit. All right, next issue I've just found is that now that I've got this extra size on here, it will no longer fit underneath the steering column, so I need to trim this back so that the steering will fit on the steering column. More little tiny fiddly bits that just take so much time. All right, finally, it is it is in, I might need to tidy up some things a bit later, but I am quite happy. It's actually working the way it's supposed to, so now I need to move on and do the rest of them. All right, I've got this second part of the dash sitting there. It's not in properly. I messed around and uh, just stuck in the old stereo and it's not all lining up in behind there. I might have to do a little metal shaving to get things to line up exactly the way I want it. But more of the issue is I don't want to do that until I get the proper stereo I'm going to put in the car because this old thing is not going back in here. As far as uh, everything lining up now, everything lines up nicely. It all sits at the same level and it's going to look great. So I think I'm going to leave that for now and I'll get back onto the window frames. All right, after a lot of stripping and uh, sanding, I've found that I still haven't got all the anodizing off. I'll show you here. If we can focus this, you can see how there's some anodizing on the edge of that piece there. So I'm gonna give this another shot of the oven cleaner and try again and see if I can get all of it off because then I'll be able to polish it properly. All right, I've got my new channel here for the window frames. So they have a couple of notches in it, which is obviously where the corners are. So that is the top section. And these other sides are basically the same length. I have no idea whether I'm supposed to glue it in or not. So I might just try and sit it in there. If it stays without needing glue, all the better. If it does need some glue, I might use a little bit of the window sealer, but we'll, um, we'll just have a play and see what it needs. Well, that was surprisingly really easy. The stuff I pulled out, I'm not sure whether they've, somebody's replaced it in the past with something else that just worked, just fit. 
and that's why they glued it in because the stuff I had before had a um, like a metal backing on it, whereas this stuff is just rubber with the felt on it. It's uh, it's in and it's looking pretty good. So I think at least with this window frame, which is in good condition, I can reinstall it and see if that'll help me winding my windows up and down. Ha ha! Beautiful, nice, smooth, flowing action. So that was a relief. I first put it in and tried to wind it up and down without uh, bolting the frame in solidly and it was still sticky and stiff and I think that was due to the frame obviously being able to move. Now the frame is uh, bolted well into place, it winds up and down like a dream. Okay, I've quickly come to realise that polishing this by hand is far too tedious, but I do have this car waffle polishing pad. Uh, it's definitely not the right thing to polish this metal. It's probably gonna get trashed, but it's worth a try because it's just too painful trying to do this like I'm doing it. So um, let's give this a crack. Now I've got all my polishing the way I want it. It's definitely not perfect, but it's probably as good as the other parts that are on the car. Now, before I put it back together, I don't want to be coming back and polishing this every few months. So um, I was looking at a lot of products on the market, trying to work out what the right thing was. Lots of them seem to have the tendency of yellowing and cracking, which is something that I definitely don't want to happen. This stuff, Exo Armor, is one that I came across. And by their spiel, it's a two pack product. It's designed to go over and prepare bare metal. So exactly like this, and it actually says to keep polished aluminium to its uh, glossy shine. I did a fair bit of research and I couldn't find any independent reviews. All I got was Eastwood's own advertising. So I'm going to be the guinea pig myself and let you guys know how it goes. So I've cleaned up my whole window frame. I've got it all ready to go. I've mixed up my XO Armor stuff. Because I have an airbrush handy, I'm going to spray it on with the airbrush. Let's uh, start spraying and see how it comes out. All right, don't look too closely at my polishing, but you can see that sheen. I'm not that happy with that effect. That seems to be what the airbrush sort of makes. So I'm gonna try wiping it with the the cloth instead, I think that's going to give me a better look. All right, now I have to leave that to dry and just uh, see what comes out of it. But I'll have to wait till next week to let it dry out completely, so I think it must be time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hi guys. Bootsy Porsche, Ferry's son and Ferdinand's grandson, was actually kicked out of industrial design school for lack of talent. He then went on to work in the family business and he is credited with designing the Porsche 911. This is controversial, however, as others believe that it was actually designed by Erwin Commender and Bootsy just took the credit. Hey guys, again, we're done for another week. I haven't got the dash completely finished, but at least I've got the seat done the way I want it to be done. Um, and I've got the window frame kind of sorted out. I still have to finish off the driver's side, but the passenger side is working and the, uh, the window winder is working, which is great. So as always, please like and subscribe to my channel, Homebook by Jeff, and you can follow me on face blah, 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 blah. Facebook and Instagram are the same place. <laughs> See you guys.